The Schrödinger equation is a linear partial differential equation in time, space or momentum that governs the wave functions of a quantum mechanical system. Conceptually, the Schrödinger equation is like the counterpart of the Newton's second law of motion in classical mechanics. In this video, we will discuss the so-called Schrödinger picture, as in how the variable time is introduced into the quantum mechanics formalism. We will write the Schrödinger equation in its formal bracket notation, and in its position representation, derive and discuss the unitary, norm-conserving time evolution operator, and lastly the von Neumann equation that governs the time evolution of the density matrix. We begin with the key quantities we discuss in the previous videos, the state vector psi, the basis kets for position x and momentum p. The wave function in position representation psi of x, obtained by taking the bra of x with the ket psi. As we will learn in the other videos, in quantum mechanics, there are different ways of ascribing the time dependence to the various quantum mechanics objects, and we call this the different quantum pictures. In this video, we focus on the so-called Schrödinger picture, where the time variable is being ascribed to the state vector, hence, the wave function is shown. We begin by first writing down the Schrödinger equation, which is a differential equation that describe how the state vector is supposed to evolve in time. This Schrödinger equation is one of the quantum mechanics postulates. H is called the Hamiltonian, and is one of the most important observable of any physical system, its energy. Being an observable, H must of course be Hermitian. Although there are heuristic argument on how one can derive the Schrödinger equation, we shall not venture into it here. But the clue lies in noticing the similarity of this with the expression of the momentum operator in the position basis in the blue box, which we derived in previous videos. Indeed, energy and time are conjugate observables, just like position and momentum. Now, the Hamiltonian can also be explicitly written as a function of x and p, where the first term, p square over 2 meters is the kinetic part, where m is the electron mass. The second term is the potential energy of the system, which typically is a function of position. Let's express our Schrödinger equation in the position representation by acting it with the x bra from the left. This allows us to express the state vector as a wave function on the left side of the equation. The momentum operator in the Hamiltonian in the position representation will become differential in x, using the equation we previously derived in yellow highlight. The Schrödinger equation now becomes a differential equation in time and position. In the simple case where the potential vx is zero, the solution of the Schrödinger equation is simply a plane wave, where k is the wave vector which is related to its momentum, and omega is the angular frequency and is related to its energy. In fact, the time and position dependence of the wave function in this case becomes separable. In general, when the Hamiltonian is time independent, this separability of the wave function is valid, thus the time dependence is simply just exponential minus i omega t as we have here. Starting again with the Schrödinger equation, we seek to prove that the time evolution operation is unitary. We begin by writing the differential in time as a differential change in the state psi vector with infinitesimal time step tau. Rearranging the terms, we arrive at the equation in the orange box, expressing the psi cat in a later time step to that in the previous time. We define the operator that generates this infinitesimal time evolution as u. To check if u is unitary, we take the product of u dagger with itself, and we can show that this is unity, provided that the Hamiltonian h is Hermitian, which it is. Thus the time evolution operator u is unitary. We notice that much of the derivation here are analogous to our discussion of the translator operator in previous video. This is not surprising since time and energy are conjugate operator, just like position and momentum. The momentum is a generator of translation and position. While here, the Hamiltonian is a generator of translation and time. Here, we rewrite the result we have obtained from previous slide, and denote the infinitesimal time evolution operator as u tau. In the second line, we express u tau in an exponential form, since one is the Taylor expansion of the other in the limit when tau is small. Finite time evolution can then be generated through sequential operation by u tau, and the finite time evolution operator u is then given by the exponential minus i h divide by h bar, multiply by the difference of the final time t with the initial time t0. The property of the unitary operator means that u dagger is equals to u inverse. Any time evolution of the wave function must preserve its norm, since electron density cannot increase or decrease in a closed system. We start with the inner product of the state vector at time t. 
we can express it in terms of its state vector at earlier time t0 using the time evolution operator. Since you dagger multiply with u is just the identity, we recover back the inner product of the state vector at earlier time. Hence, time evolution is norm preserving. Again, this is very much analogous to the translation operator we discussed for position and momentum operator in previous video. We can also derive an equation of motion for the density operator. We begin with the definition of the density operator, which is given by sum of its eigenstates outer product. With each outer product weighted by pi. We take the partial time derivative of the density operator. Using the product rule, we take the time derivative of the outer product as shown. The time derivative of the eigenstate can be written in terms of the Hamiltonian according to the Schrödinger equation. Finally, we can arrive at the result that the partial time derivative of the density operator is proportional to the commutator of the Hamiltonian with the density operator. Lastly, we discuss the calculation of the expectation value of observables. In the Schrödinger picture, the observables operator are time independent. The expectation value of the observable O, at the instant of time t, is given by acting it with a bra and ket of the state vector at time t as shown. Knowing the state vector at an initial time t0, we can use the time evolution operator u to generate the state vector at later time t as shown. Here, we see that in the computation of the expectation value, we could have also let the state vector be time independent, and attribute the time evolution to the operator instead. Such an approach is called the Heisenberg picture, which we will leave to a separate video. The expectation value of observable at time t using the density operator is also given here, which is just the trace of the product of the time independent observable O with the density operator at time t. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.